Starlink. Separation confirmed. Elon Musk's low-orbit satellite service has been essential to Ukraine's operations in the war against Russia, offering reliable internet amid cell tower and power outages. Starlink today is the backbone of the Ukrainian military communications. Now, Ukrainian officials claim that Russia has been using thousands of Starlink terminals within Ukraine and has had access to the service in occupied territories for quite some time. But Starlink and Musk say that they don't sell to or work with Russia. So how does Starlink operate? And what can be done to stop Russia from using it? Here's what we know. And liftoff of Starlink 513. Go Falcon, go Starlink. This rocket is taking Starlink satellites to space, where they will enter orbits near Earth. Starlink consists of thousands of satellites that power high-speed internet connections to terminals on the ground that users can buy and set up on their own. As Musk says, There's just two instructions, and they can be done in either order. Uh, point at sky, plug in. Starlink sells these terminals and service directly, and through distributors and retailers, like Home Depot in the US. SpaceX, which owns Starlink, has been pushing to find users in remote areas that aren't well served by traditional internet providers. Starlink was the easiest and most available solution that met the need to provide broadband in these areas, when no other options from the ground were available. Terminals can provide service from a specific location or on the move, like in a car or on a boat. One way to look at low Earth orbit broadband is to draw a comparison with your cell phone. You can move around with that phone and you are connecting to different cell phone towers. In some ways, systems like Starlink are the reverse of that, where you are relatively stationary on Earth and the satellites, which can orbit the Earth in 90 minutes, they are the ones that are moving. With around 5,400 satellites in orbit all around the Earth, Starlink says it works almost anywhere in the world. But that doesn't mean you can use the service anywhere in the world. It can't operate in countries where it isn't licensed. The ability of Starlink to do what we could call geofencing, which is limit service to certain geographical areas, is really important to how Starlink operates so that the systems are not offering service where they're not supposed to be offering service. Starlink says it does not operate or sell terminals in Russia. And the Kremlin said in a statement that Starlink is not authorized there. But Ukraine says that Russia is acquiring terminals through private firms that buy them through intermediaries and delivering them to Russia via neighboring countries. Russian forces then operate them in occupied territories in Ukraine, officials say. Lift off. So what can Starlink do to limit Russia's use of its service? Starlink has said that it takes steps to deactivate terminals if the company determines that they are being used by unauthorized parties. To keep track of its terminals, Starlink collects different pieces of information. It attains some user data during the authentication process and can track the location of the terminal. According to the company's website, terminals sold through authorized sellers also have a unique ID in order to activate a connection. But even with that, pinpointing information about specific terminals in an area that's using a lot of terminals can be a challenge. Last year, the Ukrainian government said that there are about 42,000 terminals operating in the country. Just knowing a terminal is in a specific location as opposed to across the street from that would still make it very challenging for Starlink to say these are being used by Ukrainians and then these are being used by Russian forces. If Starlink is able to pinpoint users it does not want on its network, it could have some options for blocking them out, Swope says. One thought on a scenario would be to look at how cybersecurity and information technology professionals tackle a same issue, and that process is called an allow list. So instead of trying to isolate who you don't want on your network, you identify who you do want on your network. And then only those on the allow list in that geographical area can use the Starlink service. But there are still a lot of unknowns. It isn't clear how SpaceX decides where in Ukraine to provide Starlink service and where to cut it off. The company has a contract with the Pentagon to provide service in the country, but officials haven't disclosed whether military planners instruct SpaceX about where they should target service. 